I suppose we might as well get started. Uh, Kirsten stuck his head in and said he'd be, he'd be back in a couple of minutes. So, um, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming out to the interim meeting of the uh, IATF Jason Path Working Group. Um, I guess I'm the only new world person on here, so it's good morning to all of you. <laughs> I guess it's technically morning where I am. James, shall we look at the note well? Once again, um, as at all IATF meetings, this applies um, by joining you agree to certain conditions which are listed here. Um, they keep changing this. If you haven't read this for a while, you might want to read it. I recommend doing so. Okay. Did we lose Stefan? Oh no, Greg, Greg Dennis joined us as well. Sorry, I'm still learning how to use uh, WebEx. I don't use it for anything else. Okay, fair enough. So, um, note takers, um, since I, I, I don't have a lot of strong opinions, I'm going to be taking notes. Is anybody, will anybody else take notes? Any other volunteers for notes? I guess not. Get that that tab open. Um, do we have a requirement for a Jabber scribe? Um, uh, James, do you see anybody joining us on Jabber? On Jabber? No, I've got Jabber open. If anybody joins, I'll I'll speak up for them if need be. You'll take care of it. Okay. Um, I think we might as well proceed to discuss our agenda. I think that's the next slide there, James. Right, so I had suggested the first three listed here. Um, Glenn had added uh, the, the duplicates issue. Um, I think we have a good chance of making good progress. And I, I also think that these are uh, big to, and to the extent that we have blockers that they would be included here. Um, does anybody want to add any other issues or to suggest that any of these are not appropriate? I don't hear um, a lot of voices going once. I think, I think this is uh, a lot of topics. Maybe if we manage these, we are very good. Very good. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. Well, let's jump into this. So let's start with terminology. Let me get that, that buffer open here. Um, uh, Stefan, I noticed that um, you said you thought we were in good shape here. Uh, do you want to say where you think we are and uh, and suggest that uh, what the right thing to do is here? But to know, repeat it. So, Stefan, I know you, in a note here, I noticed that you said uh, in in the email list. I, I think you said uh, something like, um, you think we are in good shape on the terminology issue. Yes, that's my opinion. We need to do some work and then we can finish in quite a short time. I think. Okay. So, I have some opinions on this, but uh, I, I'm, they're not that strong, so I'm not. So I don't want to really advance them. Does anybody? So if I understand the state of the, of the discussion, uh, there was some sentiment that we should, you know, stick to eighty two fifty nine uh, terminology where possible, and um, introduce, you know, terms as necessary to improve readability. There was a specific issue that, you know, where everything we're talking about is in fact a JSON value. Uh, with the exception of member names in in, in objects, uh, everything is a JSON value, and um, that uh, it would be reasonable to have something uh, shorter to use to in the case. So we're not saying JSON value, JSON value, JSON value all the time. Um, there were candidates for what word what word to use there, such as node, um, and so on. Um,
calling for opinions on this? I don't think we have to, to start from uh, January here. Um, so we, we have a few things that are in the document that probably don't need to be revisited. And we have a few open uh, issues around uh, how do we actually call the things that, that we put into indexing filters and uh, how do we call the syntactic elements of the uh, JSON path query? Uh, so we, we have had index indexing key uh, for, for the first thing. I think we, we are pretty clear that the, the answer to the second thing is a selector. Uh, but uh, of course, that there are a few details we, we have to um, understand about uh, what kinds of selectors we have and whether there's any useful termino terminological grouping uh, of these. So if you scroll down, you, you can see my last <laughs> contribution, which is uh, kind of more in, in that. Uh, uh, right, the very, last, the very last posting on this thread from just half an hour ago, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm essentially uh, saying that uh, maybe we need a term for all those selectors that are really indexing. And uh, that probably is, is uh, useful to have a term like indexing selector that uh, includes the, the three kinds and I think we haven't really decided whether the, the, these are actually different kinds so the the current draft has an index selector as a special case of a union selector um, and uh, you might also have an index selector as a special case of a slice selector so um, it, it's maybe not that helpful to actually uh, separate them out into different categories. is that a, a selector is the operator so whether it's a, um, a dot operator or uh, like a, a dot name or it's a bracketed selector or whichever the selector is the the encompassing thing an indexer would be specifically the the bracket operator or the bracket selector and the indexes would be the things in there the union as you have it here in your third or in, quoted in the third point is when you comma uh, delimit multiple indexes together. But I think the selector is the, the more broad, the more broad statement where the path is just a sequence of selectors, whether. Can, can you scroll back to Stefan's list? Because I only copied the three ones I, I was uh... So the, the three ones that I was uh, proposing to put under a common subheading. Yeah, that lines up with what I was saying. Whereas selector can be any of these things just as yes. a general term. And then you have these different types of selectors. That makes sense. Yeah, I think we, we have pretty much consensus on this. There may be a little bit of wiggling current item selector. It's not exactly the best uh, uh, term, but uh, I think the, the overall structure of this is pretty much consensus now. Uh, the, the part, the list of the selectors, I think we, we need a, a special term for index value uh, pair. Yeah, this that's the, the other half. I, I didn't comment on that part of your your. So we we had the the, the word key. We had the word indexing key. Um, so that that's the other uh, part that I think we need to decide on this ticket. Looking at uh, Stefan's list here, um, you're talking about the which one of these are we are we talking about then? It's in this list. Well, maybe, the object member name key. I think we were talking about it elsewhere. Right. So, so what we're talking about is the is the is the word we use when we're talking about to to describe the member name. No, we have that. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. So sorry, I'm, I'm, I've lost the thread here a little bit. Can you? So the, the, the point is just that we have often, we are often in a situation where you can su can supply either an array index or an object member name. Right. And it's useful to have a common term for these two subterms. Right, yes, yes. And uh, Stefan is proposing index here. And I was previously proposing um, indexing key or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm not strongly attached to that. Um, so index is, is fine for me as well. Be with just index. We just have to be careful to always say array index when we actually mean an array index. Can you yeah, now tell me the other uh, possibility? So we you could say, so the possibilities would be switching. index and key and I guess selector could also be a possibility? No. no. Well, yeah, but then we have to rename selectors into something else and maybe yeah. we shouldn't. <laughs> I've got a concern about the use of the word index in that it, for me, it carries uh, array connotations. Um, and so I'd like to see the PR that comes out of this to know whether in the ways, in the places this is used, it gives that impression. Uh, I think it, it'd be much, much easier to check this when it's in a PR form rather than this kind of uh, abstracted form. I see where you're coming yeah, from, Glenn. Um, the, I, I come from a .NET world where I'm primarily in C-sharp. And so when we build an indexer, we can use various data types for the values that go in that index. You can use a string, you can use um, uh, an, an integer. You can really use anything that creates a, a hash value, I suppose, or any, any data type would work inside of an index. Some would be more awkward than others, but for me, having that understanding that any data type can be an index makes having index a, a bit more of a general use term. But I totally understand where uh, index does have an array connotation as well. Yeah, the, the trouble is that key, I think, has an object connotation. <laughs> so um, I, we, I haven't seen a proposal for a truly neutral term. Having said that, I'm okay with either of these, so I'm going to shut up. So I'm not hearing a, a strong objection to any of the alternatives. Um, I, I, I just wanted to add something, sorry. Uh, in, it doesn't seem that this summary captures the state where the array slice selector is part of, of is, a, is an index uh, because it can be repeated in the union selector. So I don't know what's the right name for it, but the whole our, uh, slice expression is also a valid, a valid way to select things. In that case, more than one item. Yeah, it's so probably good idea. Find it that way it. specifically. Yeah, it's probably a good That's idea good. to make a union, uh, uh, comma separated list of slices. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we have to weaken the the term index. The, the the additional problem is that this um, the index cannot be expressed just as a degenerate form of uh, the slice expression because then the key um, the non-integer uh, key select the key index uh, is not a valid start uh, um, value in the in the slice expression or it, it's not now. So, so give, give, the, give an example. I'm not quite getting that. So um, I think we were, we were wondering whether we can kind of coalesce some of those uh, cases as a special case of something else, right? So for example, uh, the union selector is a good candidate because uh, a union of one basically subsumes uh, the, the, what we call the index, index selector that contains only one index. But the index, the if we only have one value in it or only a, a union selector of multiple indices, they can be either strings or numbers. So that's fine. But if we also want to subsume the slice uh, expression 
uh, in, 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 in the same picture and having, uh, a index, a single index, just to be the degenerate form of this uh, slice selector where we only have the start and the end and step are omitted, that wouldn't cover the case where the index is a string value, namely as a key. Yeah, but again, it's something we can solve at the union selector. We don't have to, to bend our terms for that. Right. So the idea would be I, the union selector is index or key repeated. I would say also a filter selector would work. So you could have, you know, index one comma some filter selection. That's totally acceptable to me. I would say a union can, can uh, union for lack of a better word, um, any of these acceptable values. Okay, so I'm not hearing uh, strong issues of principle being expressed here that this particular option is wrong or this other particular option must be used. So this is starting to smell to me like an editorial issue um, where we should hand it to our editors and uh, if in fact we then object specifically to formulations, we should object, we, 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 should, we should do so. Um, yeah, I, I think... We, we we should give the editors uh, uh, direction to go, and then the the truth uh, truth is in the, the actual wording. So the editors have to have a little bit of leeway of of uh, fixing things when they note uh, something we we that looked good on a napkin that doesn't doesn't work in the actual uh, text. So that, um, let's agree directions here, but not all the final details. So whenever the editors say we are now comfortable taking off with that, uh, we can go to the next item. I, I have a proposal here. Um, supposing we call an index, whether it's uh, an index is the the string or number, and you have a slice or a filter selector. Those are the things that can go in the brackets. The union, you, as Marco suggested, you define it at the union saying. It is a comma delimited, uh, comma delimited sequence of indices, filters, or filters or slices, and any combination thereof. Yeah, so but now you have terminology. You you, you are that, now making a technical change, which I happen to agree with, uh, but uh, let, let's stick with terminology for the moment. Right. I mean, that's that's the that's the terminology that you use. Is index is these two things, a number or a string. And then you also have a term a term which is the slice, the term which is the filter, and then the union can take all three of those. And that's how you organize the terms. That's how it fits in with terminology. Is the wildcard a special case, or is it an index? Uh, please ig ignore the. The, the fact that in your union selector are multiple indices. Uh, I think we should concentrate at index value pair. Uh, and in this uh, case, index can either be a string, a name, or a array index. And uh, not necessarily uh, these kind of uh, filter selectors which can go in a union selector and we we might we are we are looking for a, a term for exactly this index value pair i think This is uh, the term uh, which is currently uh, called node. Maybe we define node is uh, the same as index value pair. But I Stephen, can't see what... an agreement in this. Yeah. Uh, yes. Are you, are you talking, when you say index value pair, are you talking about 
uh, looking at the the input data and finding a specific location and and the value at that location. Is that what you're talking yes. about? Okay. Uh, I think the, the I think the difference is that with this terminology, we're not looking at values at all. We're only looking at the key or the yes, numerical right. index. Exactly. And uh, if we uh, take the normalized path expression in uh, these uh, brackets are always keys or indices. Right. Until we find the final value. And the term we, we uh, how do we tell these keys, indices? However, it's uh, uh, crucial, I think. I think in the, the normalized, uh, in the normalized uh, uh, notation, it would always be an index, whether it's a string or number as we've defined it here. If we call it index, I'm fine with it. Okay, so uh, go ahead. Uh, but if Glyn uh, says uh, index is uh, more mentally connected to an array index, it, it's it's also a point. But uh, I'm happy to wait wait for a PR to, so we can read it in context because I think that'll make all the difference. Yes. Okay. Just may I take a, a quick digression? Uh, uh, to say, um, I'm not sure who's going to write the PR for this, uh, in, or in general, who's going to write PRs, because the term editor to me has a connotation of someone who receives PRs and then makes comments on them and then merges them. And so we're, I'm really looking for, for who's going to author the PR, PRs that go into the spec and who sees that to be their role. Maybe that's another agenda item we could add on to any other business, but I tried to bring it up on the list. But I just mention it here because we are wringing our hands saying uh, it would be great when we get to a PR, and yet I don't hear anybody saying, except possibly Carsten, uh, I'm going to write a PR for this. Well, I can do that I think on the truck um, if nobody else wants to do it. So. Uh, now that I've got a building, I'm happy to start start writing stuff. Um, but I got it building as of like 15 minutes or I guess <laughs> now about 30, 45 minutes ago. So fantastic. Thank you. So there's clearly the sense of the of the working group that we need a PR here um, and that uh, I, I personally think that uh, given a PR, we should be able to progress well because i'm just not detecting any disagreements on principle in this discussion it, it, i think everybody agrees on what we're trying to say it's a matter of getting words in place to say it uh, in my last email i i already offered to try to write a pr regarding filter selectors okay okay so we have uh, we have an offer from stefan an offer from karsten an offer from greg does one of you want to put up your hand and say you'll take the first step I know my name is Stefan. I uh, you you want to when you want to know when when I start writing the PR, I can start immediately. <laughs> I'll take the uh, the terminology stuff. The term ah. So 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 Greg wants to write a PR on the terminology stuff. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, are we agree? Are we okay with uh, letting Greg run with that and see what we get? Anybody can write a PR. Of course, <laughs> but I think it would be useful in this meeting uh, if we have uh, if, if we if we create an expectation that we're going to see one from somebody in the near future. Yeah, anybody can write one. It's just that nobody has been. 
No, we, we, we nominate Greg for writing one, but if I don't like it, I'm going to write another one. Of course. That's fair. That's perfectly fair. <laughs> Okay, and it. Oh, um, are we still sticking with the with the term node? Yes. I'm happy with node. But not as an alias to uh, a shorter name for the value. Node is means a no. value and a position. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. It is the 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 pairing of the location and the value. That, that, is that, is, does that language appear in the draft, the pairing? I don't, I think the language in the draft talks about uh, um, when we are considering it in a locational context or something like that. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, I have, to, I'll have to pull the draft up here. Anyhow, having said that, I just wanted, since that, that, that term had been kicked around, I'm not hearing any objections to continuing to use that term. I don't have any objections to the term if we uh, consider the JSON uh, root and below as, as a kind of tree, then node uh, makes sense. And a specific node uh, can be uh, isolated by its index value pair or from the root um, look, its location is defined by its path. I think that's minimalistic and complete. Fair enough. So I, I don't think we have a, a, a disagreement on that. Fair enough. Anything? Anybody? Shall we move along, or does anybody want to say anything else about the terminology issue? Hearing none. Um, and our next issue was going to be um, do, 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 do. was going to be issue number um, fifty nine. Roll the And if I may, let me just notes here. Now, I think that um, the use of relative paths in JSON path is, 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 is not controversial. If I'm correct, the open issue is whether we're going to support uh, the, the at sign relative path as, at, at, as in the root position of a JSON path, at the front of a JSON path. Um, at the meta level, do people agree that is what we're talking about? I thought it was also uh, using at um, outside the filter expression, but not necessarily at the front of the selector. As, a, as an index, right? As a, to supply a dynamic value to an index. Uh, well, uh, possibly, yeah, probably, but um, the point being that I think the use case that came up was so that there was a, an escape hatch so that you could provide the current value uh, as an input to the processor. And it was substitute for at when at occurred outside the context of a filter expression. Do we have an example? I think I've seen uh, any examples where we were doing that. I think there were, there were examples given, given in this by David, weren't there, David? Um, but personally, I don't favor it. Um, I'm just pointing out that I think that was under discussion and hadn't yet been finalized. Uh, I'm looking through the issue right now. So if you find an example, please scroll to that. It took a long time for me to to understand what uh, what the use case is for for this uh, um, relative path. Uh, I. I understood that it uh, will be used from maybe from a tool from a command line where you can uh, define 
from where you start your uh, uh, queries inside of uh, the JSON uh, document. I, I, I don't like to say JSON document. Uh, <clears throat> and so uh, if you um, allow query expressions starting with the add uh, symbol, that particular path must be defined elsewhere. And that's, and that's, that's, that's what uh, David's point was, or David. Yes. Um, uh, so what he would be doing is he would be saying that there's uh, some external tool um, which has navigated partially into some uh, JSON input and has a path and wants to be able to take that path and navigate relative to where he has navigated. Um, my, my question here is, uh, if you define uh, the relative, or once you define the relative path, will you uh, always need the root path in this context? If not, then it would be uh, suffice to to redefine the root by the dollar uh, symbol. I think I, having are you are you suggesting getting rid of the dollar and just using the at symbol? Just using the dollar symbol and uh, don't talk about the at symbol in so for this it, use case. I think if both have their place. If in a specific expression there is a difference between notating dollar and notating at at the start of the query, then we need at. If there is no difference, we can always use dollar. This is I, my point. I, there is a distinct difference. I think there are times where you want the relative location. And there are times where you want the root. Um, in the chat, the latest link that I issued, I, it was a comment that I made on March 12th that follows one that, that David made. Um, I give an example where both are used. And I think it makes sense to, in some cases, to go uh, back to the root for some things, but in other cases, to be able to specify the local. There has been Marco. Uh, the, the example of for, from from Marco in 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 the chat. Uh, the uh, symbol defines. I'm not liking uh, it. I'm, I'm just. Uh, uh, I don't really care for that. So basically what I, what I, what I was trying to write there is uh, the difference. So uh, if you, if you, uh, if I understand correctly what Stefan was saying, we could, if, if all we want to do is just to drill down and just continue doing stuff from where we stopped, then we can just reevaluate uh, the remake the query by passing a new argument, the current node as the argument, and then you use the dollar from there. So the only case where we wouldn't want to do that is when we want to kind of go back, go back um, above the, the the current root by using it in a filter expression or some other place, right. which I don't know if we need that, but somebody might would, might want to. Yeah. Uh, there should be concerns about the fact that we cannot go back. Yeah. There are a bunch of models that say that, that there are a bunch of data models for JSON that I've seen that don't support navigating to the parent of, an, of a, uh, a value. 
No, but this from, in this case from the here, it's not about navigating. It's about just having two handles. So one is the handle, the current node, and the other one is the root. You still can can access and right. you can navigate from the root, root to another node, and then compare in a filter expression or something else. Uh, so it's, it's, yeah. it's still unidirectional. Yeah. It's just unidirectional. Yes. Yeah. So the use case point... for that is is a situation where you have some metadata at the root of the uh, JSON uh, object. Um, excuse me, at the root of the JSON data item that um, you need to refer to. So if if I have a copyright statement at the top of my JSON and I need to look at that to to decide which part I actually can deliver, uh, that would uh, require going at the root even for a relative uh, <clears throat> query. So I can imagine a use case. I'm just not sure that we need to address this. In, there's a, there is actually an argument to be made that this is outside our charter. Um, it is, uh, you know, somebody said that of the known implementations, something like 25% of them uh, suggest uh, supported this idiom. Um, in my implementation does not. I'm happy to do so. Um, one of the things that we do in JSON schema is we'll we'll specify the smaller require the smaller feature as a requirement. That would be starting a path with dollar sign here, and that's it. Um, and then we make allowances in the implementation or in the spec that allow implementations to optionally uh do some other behavior um or even we make general allowances that this the an implementation can optionally go do other stuff but the default behavior should be what's defined in the spec yeah I mean, so, along, go ahead so we could say that the spec says start with a dollar sign and then an implementation can say, all right, I want to optionally have support for uh, starting with an at sign. Yeah, I, I think that, um, well, my, certainly I shouldn't say, I should speak for myself. I, I, I hate optional behavior in standards. Um, the, the whole point is that we're trying to write rules to achieve interoperability. Um, and, uh, you know, at the moment, should somebody read the RFC and see this thing, then we're not giving them much help as to, you know, if they send such a thing across the internet to something that processes JSON path, is it gonna work or not? Well, uh, a lot of times it's not. Um, does anybody, you know, so, so at the moment, I, to be honest, I, I personally, you know, no hats on, this smells like it's outside our charter. Yeah, but I, can't I, I agree with that. that. But um, I think it's it's really useful to talk about the extensibility model uh, before we we uh, finish this particular issue because essentially the the uh, resolution depends on what extensibility model we have. So one extensibility model is that of JSON, which is uh, we nail down the feature set once, and. Uh, uh, yeah, everything that is not within that feature set is not JSON and that's it. So that's one way. Another way is um, actually uh, introducing versions. So you have a version one and a version two and a version three, and there is a linear progression. Um, every version learns something new with respect to the previous one. Um, so both of these models are extremely unattractive um, in practice. Uh, so I think what we really should be doing is, is group optional things into features and say um, there, there is a feature that uh, you can uh, have. And if you have that, then you can do this and that and that and that. If you don't have it, you cannot do it. And the number of features should be a small single digit one. So the other, op yeah, the the other option here is to just allow the dollar sign and only support the dollar sign and the specification says, if it doesn't start with the dollar sign, fail. But then an implementation completely on its own can optionally uh, say, you know, allow this thing. 
or allow the at sign to start a path. And then that can become known as this implementation supports this, this behavior that deviates from the spec. The default behavior is it will throw an exception if it doesn't start with a dollar sign. Yeah, I mean, uh, although I, I think this but, feature is outside our um, gender, really, our, uh, I forget the name. Uh, right, so uh, what I'm saying is we don't move forward with this. <clears throat> and then yeah. if enough implementations do it and it starts to gather um, traction, then, you know, at some point in the future, when we go to update the spec, because it will, we will want to update the spec, then it's possible. It's a possibility that we could add add this fun yeah. uh, functionality um, in. A, a very yeah, just... cheap, a very cheap thing might be uh, to always start uh, the query with the dollar uh, symbol and optionally, not optionally, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, the dollar sign not necessarily. Uh, uh, addresses the JSON root, but maybe addresses any node below. But that must be defined outside, and this is not uh, 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 part of the spec. So, so for what it's worth, let me just remind people of the um, language in the uh, in of the in the charter, uh, which says that we will develop a standards track specification. specification. We got a terrible echo. Is that going? Might be Glenn. Thank you. Um, so it says we will develop a standards track specification that is technically sound and complete based on the common semantics and other aspects of existing implementations. Where there are differences, the workbook will analyze those differences and make choices that rough considers uh, rough consensus considers technically best. So um, the, the question is, um, is the uh, relative path and the use of the at sign, um, does that fall within the basket of the common semantics and other aspects of ex existing implementations? Well, uh, not obvious in this case. So Tim, the, the fact that we are focusing on the basic specification right now does not relieve us of having an extensibility model because that has to come with the basic specification. So whatever the charter says, we have to have an extensibility model. Yeah, I was going to make a point on that. Um, hopefully I'm not echoing too badly when I'm speaking. Um, no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, um, which was the, um, if we uh, make at the beginning of a path a syntax error in the spec, then one extensibility model which gives uh, David what he wants is to allow implementations to uh, override syntax errors uh, and, and add behavior. Uh, so, uh, you know, treat uh, syntax errors as being the kind of extension points, if you like. I have not uh, actually, I have not actually seen. seen um, I, I haven't actually seen a, I possibly, I just missed it. Maybe, maybe it's there and I just missed it. I haven't seen any uh, specific proposals for extensibility models yet. Karsten, did I miss something? No, um, I, I didn't write this up yet uh, because uh, so far I, I didn't need to. Um, but I think we have uh, tons ex of experience in the ITF uh, doing extensibility. So we might want to apply that uh, knowledge uh, here. And uh, specifically, I think we need to have identified extension points. Um, so uh, we can do extensions in a more orderly way than just saying uh, everybody can, can do with a syntactically invalid uh, JSON path specification what they want, because that never gives us inter uh, interoperability. If we have defined extension points, we can make sure that we have a process that, that allows people to use these extension points in an orderly uh, fashion. So, so just to make this concrete, for example, one extension point would be the first character of the JSON path and that uh, any value other than dollar signifies an extension 
uh, you know, not defined in this in this in this draft. Um, is that the kind of thing you're thinking about? Yes. And there, there would also be an IANA registry of of uh, uh, first characters uh, with a defined registry policy. So we know how to to uh, how to go ahead and and uh, start making an extension. And we can discuss lots of different ways of doing that. I, I don't want to do that today because I haven't written up a, a proposal. Uh, but I think the important thing is uh, not just to to open the floodgates. Every syntax error uh, has has a random uh, implementation dependent interpretation, like deleting all your files, which is the, the traditional um, uh, implementation dependent uh, meaning. Um, but we we have a defined model in in which uh, we um, allow both implementers or groups of implementers, or uh, this working group, if it ever gets rechartered, uh, to define extensions. Okay, so um, I, I think I think it's hard to disagree with what Karsten is saying, is that um, uh, a suggestion for an extensibility model would be welcomed. Let me just present the contra point of view. Um, you, you talk about, you know, Jason having no extensibility model whatsoever and how awful that is. Well, you know, Jason's doing pretty well out there, you know. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm actually okay with things that never get revised once 1.0 has shipped. Um, but, you know, I'm probably, I may be in a minority on that. So, so I think uh, a necessary next step would be somebody saying something specific about extensibility. I do not get the present, the, the, the uh, feeling that anybody on this call, at least, strongly feels that we should write uh, support into our document for JSON paths beginning with that sign. Here, here. Agree. Okay, at at this time, good. I agree. So long as uh, uh, my, I have a caveat in that I think we should be able to update the spec at some later point, which goes contrary to what you just said, Tim. Well, JSON is fine because it, it's solving a specific problem, uh, but uh, all experience with with uh, language like things, expression uh, like things is that they do get extended. Uh, so I, I don't think that, that uh, no extensions ever model actually applies to uh, something like JSON path. Fair enough. Um... Okay, so we're we're asking uh, people to to propose an extensibility model, um, and I think we even have an agreement on what one piece of it looks like, uh, you know, which is the first character. Um, anything else we need to discuss on the relative path and the at sign? I think there is. Uh, I agree to to uh, only uh, support. The dollar sign for now. I think there is a meta now. issue, which which is how is this decision communicated back to David or David? Um, because um, uh, the tone through this issue has been, uh, I think this is in within our uh, charter. We should be able to do this. I don't see any arguments against it, and uh, because he's not here, I'm disappointed. Uh, that he won't can't participate in this part of this discussion, and I can just see this blowing up again in the issue. So how do we present this to him? Well, we will, you know, I'm sure. taking up the meeting. I don't know if anybody else is, um, and we will um, uh, go back to it, it to the working group uh, mailing list with with the notes. Um, you know, this being the, the ITF, David David is 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 able to explain to us why we're, why we're wrong, and if he can convince us, then that's fine. Um, okay, okay. Okay, are there any other issues related to relative paths that we should turn our attention to before we move along? I'm looking at the... I don't have any, um, but... Okay, fair enough. Then the next one we are going to look at 
is issue number, oh, regular expressions, issue number 70. So, so what is the state of the art in the uh, in in the uh, comparison world? Hold on, I'm gonna look at the uh, at the at the grid here. So, yeah, I was looking at the grid that uh, what's his name, uh, C. Bergmer did, um, and there are multiple lines. There's two lines about regular expressions. There are two aspects to this conversation, though. One is, do we support regular expression? The second is, supposing we do, what kind of regular expression is it that we support? There's multiple versions. Um, there's a, a regex two. So um, I think we answer them in that order. Well, the problem okay, is that if there is no answer to question two, then we have an answer to question one. Uh, so maybe we should actually <laughs> discuss question two first. So, so are there any... Go ahead. Basically, there are two kinds of regular expressions. There are the regular expressions that uh, grab pioneered uh, that uh, essentially tell you whether you have a match or you, you don't have a match. And then there are the regular expressions that are actually meant for, for parsing input and, and uh, extracting subparts and computing on them. And uh, this is the, the JavaScript and, and the Perl and, and all these other regular expressions. They were actually defined for that kind of application. And uh, my hypothesis is that we actually need an ex a, re a regular expression for matching and not for computing. Um, so the, the problem, of course, is that uh, a regular expression mechanism that is useful for computing can, in a pinch, also be used for matching. It's just a little bit more verbose then. And that's why people who, have, who are writing implementations are typically focusing on the matching uh, on the computing uh, regular expression because uh, they, they get to cover both uh, bases. Uh, but uh, in a spec like this, uh, this means that uh, you get a lot of complexity in the regular expression uh, component, and and all the diversity, of course, uh, you find out there is in the computing side and and not really in the matching uh, side. Um, well, there, there is a little bit of diversity in the matching side, but not as much as on the computing side. Um, so <clears throat> if we just look what implementations are doing, then we find RE2 and, and uh, PCIe and uh, ECMAScript and all these things. And, and uh, I don't know what flavor PHP uses. Um, so this is probably what we will find in implementations that somehow added regular expressions uh, to, to JSON path. Um, if we go from first principles, we really should be looking for, for a matching kind of regular expression. And the, the only kind I found when we discussed this in, in the context of, of CDDL uh, was the W3C uh, schema regular expressions. And these may be a little bit uh, unpopular uh, because they, they are 98% what we need, except they have these character class sub subtractions, which no other regular expression flavor uh, has, which is really useful, <laughs> but uh, it, it's unfortunate nobody else has them. Um, so uh, allowing the, the whole W3C uh, schema regular expression uh, gamut uh, leads to problems with peeping, the people having to to uh, change their implementations uh, to to support that. So that that's not really a, a, a choice we can make either. So in the end, I think what we will do is we will point to 
a regular expression specification that, that is already a standard, like W3C, like ECMAScript, uh, and um, simply say this is the subset that JSON path actually supports. So it's pretty easy to write an ABNF for, for a W3C schema regular expression that doesn't have character um, class subtraction. So that, that would be my personal favorite, but that, that's not the, the point I'm trying to make here. Um, I'm trying to make the point we will define a subset. Um, and we could also use ECMAScript and PCIe and extract a common subset of those uh, for our purposes as well. And then probably IE2 would be in this, that same set. Let me make a, a deduction from what you just said, Karsten. I think what you what you didn't say, but what you meant is that uh, we, we should not do this unless we have uh, a specification of exactly what we mean when we say regular expression, and further that specification should be simple and matching based as opposed to data extraction based. Very much yes to number one. I think so for to number two. Uh, the Kleber. The, the Kleber. Okay, Stefan's talking to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Can I mute him? Okay. okay um, is there anybody who wants to argue that we should, we should just leave regular expressions out? Oh, I'm surprised. I would have thought that somebody would just say leave them out. Okay, so so nobody I mean, wants to just I, leave them out. Yeah, that that would they seem to be yeah. a deal breaker. But it seems to be very hard to actually get to something uh, that is uh, that is easy to to make uh, to make an interoperable uh, in practice. I mean, right. we, we we can right. define our own our own regular expression rules and whatever. But will will that be easy for people to to uh, abide by, 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 by you know, such a spec. Yeah, my personal, yeah, my personal preference, preference. Oh, wow. Okay. My personal preference in um, as an implementer is to go get a, a library that does regular expressions for me. Um, and it'd be ideal if I could find a library that exactly matches what we specify here and is supported in all the various um, or has support in all the various languages. Um, that's a tall. And you order. also said that as an implementer, you don't really enjoy when that library is some native code you need to link in your higher level language. Which it's correct. Works. I think you really have to understand the, the differences in motivations here. For a library developer, adding a feature is a win. For a standards developer, adding a feature is a lose, lose, lose. So we will never <laughs> oh, find a that. library that, that actually fills in what, what you just described. I, I understand that from my work with Jason Schema, but um, this, this seems like a, a big enough feature that um, it's worth including, in my opinion. We just have to figure out how. So I'm going to agree strongly with Karsten and say that unless we can have a specification of what we mean when we say regex, it gets consensus support, then we should just shouldn't have regex. It, it, I just don't think it's okay to say, yeah, you can use regexes in your filters without, and, and say, and, and, you know, it depends what God and the implementer happened to put in, in their particular regex library. Um, I, I don't think that's, that's acceptable. So, so I think that those who, um, want to have regular expressions in JSON path filters need to propose exactly what that means. Not by that, I mean, proposed language. Yeah, that sounds I mean, fine to me. I'm, I'm expecting that, uh, if we pick a subset of the W3C stuff, uh, then any given implementation like my own might need to then get into the business of massaging, uh, that subset into uh, equivalents in the implementation that is available on, on the platform or in, in the language. Uh, and that's, yes, that's quite a big if, yes. if we do this right, if we do this right, uh, actually the massaging uh, might be having uh, 
carrot at the start and a dollar at the end? Well, that'd be perfect, but um, yeah, Let, let's see where it goes. But um, yeah, somebody has to make a proposal. Yeah, somebody has to make a proposal. Yeah. Um, I, have, I, have a question. I have a question. Sorry, can I just finish? The, the, point I was making, the point I was making in general was that if the subset doesn't have that property that it's easy to implement on top of existing platform uh, implementations of regex, then um, we're putting quite a burden on the implementer. And uh, I would start to be nervous about including it in the spec at that point. I agree. Does anybody, has, any, has this been done elsewhere in the IETF? Are there any other IETF RFCs that actually say use reg regular expressions here and, and, and which ones? Well, for instance, Yang defines regular expressions to use W3C uh, schema regular expressions. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yang implementations instead use PCIe. <laughs> That's the situation I would like to avoid. I mean, PCIe is huge and complex and messy, but it is at least well defined. Uh, not sure about the last part, but the, the, the subset we want to use, that is very well defined, yes. When we are saying about subsets, do we mean that we are fine having implementations, evaluating a well a well defined a, a well well formed uh, JSON path regular ex expression on their engine? But what if they are fed a invalid malformed um, regular expression path? Do we does the standard would the standard require the library to refuse such a regular expression or that now might you are work? In the extensibility concept again yeah yeah that's exactly that question is answered by the extensibility concept it's not answered here i don't think so. i i'm i'm not i don't understand how that is answered by the extensibility proposal that we had before to to treat the extension points as specific things at the, at the very beginning of the of the path. Well, if you have well defined extension points, then anything that's invalid and not invoking those extension points is invalid. So ah, okay, that, okay, yeah. So basically, this means that whatever is the syntax of the regular expression that we define must be checked by the author. So it just before feeding that into the regex implementation of choice. That's correct. Okay. So if it's simple enough that that's doable for it for I'm 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 just wor worried about implementers having a r relatively uh, raspable task. Okay, so I think the sense of the group here is that if we get a specific proposal saying what we mean by regexp, then the group is comfortable with including that. Um, this, this opens another issue at, at some point, you know, in, in RFC 8259, there are interoperability notes saying, well, you know, here are things that are allowed, but, you know, could lead to interoperability problems. Um, one would expect that there would there'd be a, a space for a caution here, given that, you know, there's, there's a lot of variation in, in what implementations do but anyhow to get back to what i say is, is, is i think that people would be okay with including regular expressions in json path uh, once we have a specific proposal for what that means you write that down There was an, another discussion about uh, regular expressions. I, I like uh, what Glyn said. In a, uh, I would prefer to re restrict the right-hand side of the regular expression match to a literal regular expression. Discussions was about uh, allowing uh, JSON path fragments inside uh, of regular expressions. We should agree here to uh, not allow this and uh, the first version at least to only allow uh, literal 
regular expressions. My proposal. Uh -huh. Right. So, I mean, I think that's covered by what we just said is that once we have a specification of what we mean by JSON path, that should not include, um, so what we mean by regular expression, that should not, should not include any magic non literal stuff. No, that, that's a completely orthogonal question. Whether you can, can compute a regular expression or are limit to, limited to literals is, is uh, completely orthogonal to what the regular expression means once you have it. And um, I think that, that what uh, Stefan said is that we, we should have literals. And um, I would expect that th there will be extensions to, to the expression language inside JSON path over time. So that would be an extension point that, that is very likely to come up uh, at some point. Um, but uh, probably for a basic JSON path, we don't need that because all use cases that, that I have been working with actually can work with static literal uh, regular expressions. Right. I, I, I have to say, I've not seen a use case where I would want, and I, I, frankly, I'm terrified. I mean, regular expressions frighten me enough without the notion of dynamically constructing them at runtime and then evaluating them. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like we have, uh, um, reasonably good consensus that we need uh, uh, to define what regular expressions we're going to allow and then 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 allow them. Cool. Uh, does anybody want to say anything else on this subject? Just from the opening comment on that issue, um, when I implemented um, regular expressions in my JSON path implementation, uh, someone came to my aid and pointed out about uh, regular expression DOS attacks and is this something that we need to be concerned about in the security section or to address in the subset that we choose? Or are we going to kind of close our minds to that or uh, you know, restrict our interest away from that? I think the answer is yes, comma, yes. So we definitely have to write a paragraph or two in the security considerations about that. And I think we also should restrict our subset to uh, those expressions that don't lend themselves to uh, DOS attacks. Thanks. Okay, so for example, taking the um, W3C uh, standard and intersecting it with RE2 would give you such a um, possibility, it would give you a restricted set that didn't allow um, DOS attacks. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's work that needs to be done. Work that needs to be done. Should be relatively easy to do. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds very promising. We're all done with this. Can I get a regex that I can run against the regexes to determine if the regex is a <laughs> sub proper yeah, subset of what we're regex, using? Reg regexes are not powerful enough to actually do that, so it would be <laughs> alien. Effect. Okay, very good. So uh, we, I think we have uh, made some useful progress on the three issues that I suggested. Glenn had also suggested one. James, you put it in a slide, I think. Which one was that again? 59, I think, or? No, we did 59. Glenn, what, 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 which one was the one you suggested? Duplicates, there it is. Thank you, James. 23. 23. Oh, thanks. Glenn, do you want to speak to this one or, or, or Greg, since you seem to have raised it? Does somebody want to speak to this and say, give it a, a feeling of where, where we think we are in the discussion? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've raised this and I, someone's that going. Um, I raised this and um, basically the idea behind it is that if we have the two of the same value in the, in the output, if that value is an extensive object, say we found that same identical extensive object in multiple places within the within the input value, it doesn't make sense to evaluate the remaining portion of the path against both instances that are identical because you'll get just get the same set of values out. Um, so from that, does it make sense to collapse down to duplicate? Um, 
to or to, to collapse the duplicates into a single value in the, in the output and ultimately questions were raised around um identifying not only a value but also its location which would be a node um and we determined that if somehow a uh, uh if somehow the path evaluated the same location and value in the the, the same node twice then those would be to, those would be removed but if it evaluated to the same value but different locations those are different nodes and so those would actually uh remain in the um remain in the, the the final output uh implementations could take advantage of the fact that they are the same and only run or that the values are the same and only run the path on one copy of the value noting that it's in both locations um that would be an optional you're, you're, optimization you're that, challenged that by your language do. Unfortunately, so in in German we have das selbe and das gleiche. Yeah, yeah. So we we have different terms for identical and equal. And you are always saying the same, and I don't know whether you mean identical okay. or equal. So we have the concept yeah, of no one to actually be able to talk about identical. So to, right. two nodes are equal if they are identical, while two values are equal if the values are equal and what you are saying is right. identical nodes should be collapsed and uh, equal nodes should not be collapsed no what i'm saying is um two nodes with the same value should not be collapsed correct but if you get two, if you get two independent results from, let's see, if you get two selectors returning the same node, which is the same value in the same location, which one value in in one location returned twice, then those two should be collapsed. You know, sense? I have to say that you know when I looked at your very first example <laughs> way back in September twenty fourth, wow. You know your very first example from you, Greg. Um, you know of, of of A and B with string null true and false string something. Um, right. And and you're going to collapse string null false string into string null false. I think that makes the life way more difficult for the person writing the JSON path and writing code to process what's coming back, because if they assume they're just going to, they know that you know. That the, 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 the object they're addressing has a bunch of array valued top level things um, and they're getting two from each, but all of a sudden they only get one from one case because it happens to be the same as something before. Isn't that going to make writing the code to process the output of this much more difficult? Um, I, know, I guess it depends on the situation. I mean, I look at this and I say, you know, dollar dot star zero comma one and then I'm then I know that if there are four top level items, then I expect eight things in the list that comes out. Um, and if I are, if if they're magically there aren't because two of them happen to be right, and so that goes that goes in, into the idea that, like in in this particular case, um, what I've written is not what we landed on. Uh, what I've written is strict value equality not node equality um, in that first set string null false string those two strings are actually from different nodes and so what we landed on is to say that those strings would both be included in this set because they're from different locations and um, using stefan's original implementation where you can optionally get the, the the locations reported instead of the values or in addition to the values it makes more sense in that context with that level of output if you're just looking at the values maybe you're not interested that string is included in there twice maybe you are i don't know but from a performance point of view if string isn't string but is a rather complex object 
that I'm evaluating. It has the same keys and all those keys have the same values and the the depth is extensive. I don't want to have to, from a performance point of view, I don't want to evaluate the same object twice. That may be an edge case. I don't know. I, I mainly agree here. Uh, if we are interested in how many instances of uh, string value are in the uh, JSON, we get the correct answer in this uh, with this example of two. Uh, Glenn has brought it to the point removing duplicate paths, but not duplicate values. Uh, I agree with this and, and I see um, overall agreement. If I'm correct. Yeah, I think I had an example somewhere in here where uh, it actually did return the same location twice. Uh, but I can't find it. So if you had something like um, uh, inside a selector, you had a let's say you had a union selector, and it was a um, if you wanted to do I don't know for lack of a better example um, star comma one um, where if you were to get an object you'd just get all the keys or you'd get you get the values under all the keys, but if you get an array then you would get all of the objects, and then you would also get the second element in the array again. Is that second element in the array, that would be a, a duplicate because both indexes, or both, yeah, both indexes returned that location. So does that warrant removing that duplication? That's the question. I'll put it I in think, the chat. I think you cannot judge uh, duplication uh, by values alone. You you always need the location. And if locations are the same, identical, then we can uh, remove or collapse them. Do we have an example in any of the issue discussion? I, I haven't seen it. No, I don't have I don't have that example in there. I just scanned through it. You see, what, what bothers me is when when I'm writing a JSON path, usually I I know what the JSON I'm writing against looks like. You know, I have the notion that this is a, a you know an object whose values are arrays, or vice versa, or something like that. And um, I'm trying to imagine something where. Yeah, sorry, I'm just having trouble to imagining a real world scenario where I would want duplicate removal to happen. Yeah. The argument of identifying a count of something is, is a really good argument against this as well. If I want to vaccinate people with uh, uh, BioNTech uh, vaccine, I'm looking in my JSON for uh, uh, people who are female because they, they all get the BioNTech, and uh, for uh, males uh, older than than sixty, um, so I could simply choose for people older than sixty, and uh, choose females, and then I get a result, and that of course will have the the females that are older than sixty twice. So that's the kind of application that you have in mind when, when you say you coll collapse uh, duplicates. I, I, would, I might make an argument that that happens at another level of the program. <laughs> that, yeah, know, I get, I get be, the list back, be. and if I want to crush duplicates out of it, okay, I can crush duplicates out of it. Um, that's a one-liner in most programming languages. But I'm not sure I want that happening down in my, you know, pull the pieces of JSON out code. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe this is out of scope or like we we just return what's queried and move on and let the application handle um afterward i'm fine with that glenn you you wanted to talk about this one do you have an opinion 
Uh, I'd be very happy to allow duplicates. Okay, is anybody on this call going to make a passionate argument for why we should, why we should in fact, uh, try and write down the scenario and support duplicate uh, suppression? I would just like to caution that uh, we m may have a simplified view of what expressions actually mean and might come in a situation where we assume duplicates are being removed. Uh, but if we say we're not removing duplicates, then we have different interpretations. So let's see whether we run into problems with that. But until we do, I think I can agree with that. I can always uh, uh, agree to uh, just allow duplicates for now. Okay, I think I'm hearing um, what you amounts to consensus. Went in the right is... way. Sorry, go ahead. If if we screen the right way, isn't the descendant selector also kind of implicitly removing du removing duplicates? Because it if you if you look at it as if finding an intermediate node and then going uh, recursively deeper until it, it matches some something else, wouldn't that uh, find multiple nodes depending on where the recursive uh, search has been started? And so, in a way, we are already kind of uh, filtering out duplicate nodes implicitly in that kind of selector. Yeah, I think the it's recursive, a case. Descent. recursive descent. I would say that the recursive would descent say. would actually um, it wouldn't remove those if it found two strings, then it would return both of them because those two because strings those would, two be would be in different locations. locations. I think what Mark is saying is that um, uh, if you enumerate uh, your grandchildren, you're obviously, uh, so if you enumerate your children and their children, you're obviously going to enumerate your grandchildren. And so there's a level of duplication if you just look at it abstractly. But any any sane kind of uh, recursion, because of descent, would, wouldn't produce duplicate uh, locations. Mm. Um, and I think, that, I think that's fine. I don't think that that's kind of, opens the door for us to avoid duplicate locations elsewhere in the spec. That's right, because the recursive descent isn't just returning the leaves, it's returning the intermediaries as well. I see what you're saying. Uh, I think that is not well described in the draft though, that 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 so probably we should we should take a note to make sure that people understand that's what's going to happen on the on the descendants selector. Because I think you're right, but I that hadn't right, crossed that hadn't crossed my I've kind of been prodding people to write the descendants PR for a while, and uh, at least two people have got it on their to-do list, uh, but it hasn't appeared yet. And I think it should be an easy one to knock off. So um, uh, let's hope yeah. it appears in the next few weeks. That's what I was thinking about that problem. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't uh, yet find time to actually write it yet. Good. So it would be nice to have a PR. Okay, I think we have made good progress on that one. Um, so we have moved through all of our expanded agenda in one hour and a half. Um, does anybody else? We have we, we all got we all got online and gathered here together. Uh, is there any other productive use we can put our time to? Is there anything else? Any other issues that did we uh, want to deserve our? Did attention? we want to talk about the filter expressions? Before we do that, a quick, quick question of order. Uh, I'm typing into a GoDMD file that James has typed into, but he has, seems to have stopped doing that. There was yeah, some Carl. confusion. Sorry, Carsten. Um, I, I, I couldn't keep up with the conversation. I was going to edit the notes when the VOD for this meeting would be online, and then I'd have a bit more. Okay, bit okay, more I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm just, I, I just wanted to know whether we, we, we have another confusion, because it's still not exactly the the file name that's in the. Uh, um, um, I, data sure. Track, huh? uh, we can clean this up afterwards. I thought I'd cleaned yes. out all the all the ones that I'd goofed up earlier. Sorry about that, but. I, I was planning on doing that post meeting. 
Yeah, so the, the, the yeah, pro so tip the, for the, the, the pro chair tip is chair. to always use the link from the data tracker because then you don't make typos in, in those names. Um, just another point of order. Can we please capture uh, volunteers who have stepped forward to write PRs in the minutes? Yep. Yeah. I've been writing myself a set of notes uh, in, in, a, in a private document, which, which James, I will shoot over to you. It may, may be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, was that Greg? I said want to talk about filter expressions. Is, do we have an issue on that? Uh, yeah, I thought it was listed in the um, uh, in the agenda. Well, we did talk about the, uh, you know, the at sign, the relative paths, and we talked about regular expressions, but I think. Um, I thought we wanted to talk about uh, specifically filter expressions, number 64. Number 64. I think it was, six, I think it was 64. We were talking about syntax. So it's actually spread across several. Filter expressions. Here it is. There was. Oh, uh, so there's 64. There's 92 opened by Stefan. Yeah, the first thing we run into is that we have a terminology problem that I think we can now resolve. Um, because the the whole thing with the bracket and the question mark and so on, that is the filter selector. And right. uh, within the question mark, within the parenthesis following the question mark, there we have expressions that we could call filter expressions because they are being used in the context of filters. And they are probably slightly different uh, from the indexing expressions that we are using in indexing selectors. Well, I was proposing to uh, to get the filter expressions syntax straight first, and then uh, return to the indexing expressions. Uh, there were several ideas. Uh, one idea is to ask if the parent fields in the following the question mark are necessary syntactically. Uh, I know it's uh, used nearly everywhere, but if we allow parentheses inside of the expressions, uh, we can we can define them to belong to that expression and to without. And uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, possible or, or not possible to uh, do a valid parsing without these parentheses. If it is, we can discuss to leave them out. Yeah, I, I personally, yeah. yeah. Um... There's a, a lot going on with these, uh, with the filter expressions. Uh, lots of questions that are up in the air. I think um, I think it might be worth co um, coalescing all these uh, issues into a single into a single issue. We've got number seventeen, which I originally opened back in September. Um, number fifty-seven, which Stefan you opened. Uh, Ninety. Two, which Stefan also opened. Um, I think there was one more in here, 64 that I mentioned. Yeah. Um, it, it might help for someone to take all of those issues and kind of condense them down into a list of open questions that we have. I think some of them try to tackle operators. Some of them try to tackle what Stefan was mentioning is the are the parentheses necessary? Um, various this, other this things. Actually, should be separate issues in the end. 
So we can, right, <clears throat> once but... we agree whether we, we want to have parentheses, we can just close that issue. Yeah. So uh, I still think that a lot of the discussion is um, it's kind of spread out throughout those issues. I don't think any of those issues specifically talk about just one of those um, discussion points. And maybe that's something that can be uh, reworked in a new set of issues. In, uh, I continued the issue 64 and in my first comment I did a list of the former issues referencing filter expressions and I also tried to comment on them in uh, in, 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 in my comment so uh, I don't see the necessity to do another issue but if you yeah if this you, is from Stefan on an issue this is the 64 Stefan posted something looks like at the first of May um, with a nice with a nice discussion tour through the whole issue and always referencing the former ones I tried to get them complete maybe I'm just one or another well this looks very complete to me okay. maybe we can look at closing the other ones then if we need specific discussion on any one any of these points we uh, open an issue for that uh, there's a lot that to unfold here one one of the uh, central discussion points might be the filter selector expression syntax and Greg proposed a minimal set of basic uh, comparison mathematic and boolean uh, operators uh, can you scroll down a bit filter expressions In number 64, it's the third comment. Um, point four the point third two. Third comment 4.2, yes. Who is managing? Uh, James, could you scroll down a little bit um, in that? Yeah, 4.2. There we go. 4.2, yes. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> filter expression uh, must resolve to a boolean expression so uh, if we uh, discuss the operators used in this filter expression might not uh, use arithmetic operators as addition subtraction uh, at the first glance, maybe they are possible. This, I, I, I have not a good feeling about this. I would uh, start with just using uh, comparison and Boolean operators. Do you have arguments? Yeah, I, I do. Okay. So if I want to say that um, the node I'm looking at, say the current node, is equal to some other node that I reference from the root uh, minus one. Then I should I should be able to do that. <laughs> so let me let me type up uh, an example here. Uh... Hmm. these uh, arithmetic uh, operators m might be useful with index expressions where we might do index arithmetic, but uh, 
I'm 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 not sure if we we, we should have a close look and see what existing implementations actually support here. I would like to start with a minimal uh, uh, operator collection and and with discussion and uh, use cases we we can expand it. What's your opinion here? Well, I, th I think I'd like to, to have a quick look at what existing implementations actually do. Um, I, I'm a minimalist. I'm, I'm, you know, when in doubt, leave it out. Um, and so I would, I would certainly be sympathetic to leaving arithmetic out, unless that happens to be widely supported and, and interoperable, in which case, hey, no problem. It's my feeling that if you're going to be parsing an expression that supports Boolean uh, operations, it's not a big stretch to also support these arithmetic operations. I already had, I, I already support uh, um, all of these in my, um, in my implementation, in my previous implementation. Okay, one, one, one charming aspect of uh, doing exactly this might be uh, if we, uh, will uh, decide to always uh, to to also uh, reuse this uh, expression syntax with indexing expression so uh, it would be the same uh, syntax this might be an argument My perspective is that uh, these numeric operations um, don't really pay for their cost. The cost benefit isn't really, it's a bit too high, uh, personally. But, and I'm thinking in terms of the spec, I agree implementation wouldn't be too bad, but it's just extra verbiage, verbiage in the spec from my perspective. Um, but I don't strongly object if, uh, if they're, if they're um, commonly supported. Yeah, my position is the same as Glenn's. I'm just glancing at the at the C. Bergner. Sorry, what's C. Bergner's actual real name? Christoph. 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 Okay. Um, so I'm looking, and yeah, there is indeed filter expression with addition. With very mixed results. Hmm. Okay, I, you know, if this, if this turns out to be not widely supported, I would be quite negative about us inventing it. It's well, valuable to have, but. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, another aspect uh, Greg was bringing uh, to the point has been uh, when comparing, if we uh, comparing uh, uh, weak types or do we uh, uh, strong typing? Yeah comparison right. and uh, I'm not not because I'm uh, coming now nearly exclusively from JavaScript I'm, uh, I would prefer the the weak type comparison yeah personally uh, I come from .NET which is very strongly typed um, and I have had to implement uh, loose comparisons already, so I can just kind of port that logic over. But it was it was a pain to do, um, and I don't want to force other implementers into doing that if they happen to be in a strong language. 
Carson, how did you type that? Uh, I'm not sure how we... <laughs> uh, I just opened the Unicode table for math characters and typed it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the value of string one plus uh, number one called bottom in, in computer science. Yeah. Okay. Um, so coming back to the loose equality thing, uh, I imagine this would be pretty uh, a pretty divisive topic. But um, yeah, I would I prefer uh, a, a strict equality over a loose equality. Um, but people with different language backgrounds have different views. I agree. Does, does anyone uh, does anyone support loose equality? Oh, loose equality is arguably the enemy of interoperability. It also is a source of interesting security problems. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not hearing my what we have to what we have to define is what happens when the input values do have incompatible types and how to bubble up uh, the how to model the behavior of uh, ignoring those cases since we have the overarching rule that a syntactically valid asymptotic expression shall never return error but we should just not produce uh, um, not produce output values is that right I think that we already have verbiage in the spec to that effect. Yeah, I think the sense of the group here is 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 reasonably clear. Um, you know, as Glenn pointed out, there is that uh, you know there's there's <laughs> the whole arithmetic thing is not you know does not at the current point offer good interoperability. So that's another argument for not going there. Even granted that there's it's easy to think of situations where it would be useful. Okay. Any, anything else on this subject? Uh, the security uh, issue point is it uh, our task to uh, to do provisions to avoid this or wouldn't it be the task of the implementers? I think it's the task of the implementer or the client of the implementation, uh, which would be the application. Right, but when you're defining a protocol, you know, it would be reasonable to use JSON path in the protocol and um, it would be good to design JSON path in such a way as to not facilitate um, this kind of attack. Right, I would, I would say that it's our responsibility to highlight known potential risks, but I don't know that it's our responsibility to mitigate those risks necessarily. Well, we shouldn't create more risks than necessary. I mean, if, if exactly. avoiding the risk comes with a high cost, then we document the risk. But if avoiding the risk is entirely feasible, uh, then we are much better off avoiding the risk. Yep. Hmm. By the way, Stefan, thanks for. I I somehow missed this 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 uh, contribution on sixty four here. That's super helpful, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just raise okay. another okay. another aspect of filter expressions while we're here, just to raise the awareness, uh, which is if you have uh, if you allow non scalar comparisons. So an example would be.
something like that. So you're comparing multiple values and saying how they all greater than three. Okay, that is tempting to implement, but you end up with a property of greater than in that it's not total anymore. <laughs> so it kind of destroys its normal mathematical behavior. Um, so, you know, that's just another consideration. Uh, and I think I may have pointed out that uh, uh, Christoph, uh, Christoph Bergma, in his proposal A, came up with a syntactic restriction on uh, filter expressions to avoid those kind of non scalar comparisons and sidestep the whole issue, which is rather neat. But I can understand why we might want, not want to go that route, but I just wanted to raise a general issue because it will come up. I can post a couple of uh, other issues. That, well, let me post one, which is actually an issue against my implementation, which fleshes it out a bit. And there's a, there's a pointer in there to another issue. So if anyone's interested in the background there, have a delve into there and, uh, and come back. I'll keep that in the back of my mind. I will we'll raise it as we go through if we end up with non-scalar comparisons. My instinct is that I would love to rule that thing out. That what looks like a fruitful source of baffling behavior. Yeah. But uh, someone needs to start writing a, a pull request, and I. Uh, I would like to uh, start exactly this and expect a lot of comments regarding this. Agreed. Th thanks for raising that issue. That's troubling. Another related, uh, somehow related thing. What about lexicographical sorting and you know collation ordering in? Multilingual uh, situations. Tracing path doesn't do ordering or any uh, post processing. No, no, it, we have the uh, greater than uh, operation ah, okay. between two strings. Okay. The relational uh, operators. Well, um, I, I, you know, I think. You, you have to go with, with just Unicode code points. Anything else leads you to madness, right? For non -tech, for, for, for textual stuff, anyhow, I mean. Yeah, so we, 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 have to, we have to say that explicitly, right? Yes, I agree, we have yes. to say that. Uh, can we, Agree all to the fact and and the Greg's proposal to use uh, for operators the very common C based syntax. Yes. Okay. I don't want to be boring, but once again, we need to make sure we check carefully against existing implementations and, and make sure we're not doing something that's flying in their face. But I think that's what they do. Uh, uh, Stefan's original JavaScript uh, implementation just used the underlying expression engine and JavaScript is, is C based, so it uses right. the same operators. Yes. I see no problems here. Okay, we're getting close. We're getting close to the end of our time. Um, is there anything else that's urgent and deserves our time that we should make sure we get in? When is the next interim? Well, when's the next ITF? Um, one eleven is. Sorry, when's that? July. The end of July. End of July.
So I think it's worth having another interim. I'm inclined to agree. We should probably take the time between now and the next IETF and cut that roughly in half. So mid June. Mid June, yeah. Time slot work for everybody. I'm in New Zealand, so it's it's like nine to eleven p.m. for me. Well, it's perfect for Europeans. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I got up at one thirty in the morning. I was thinking negative thoughts about Europe, to be honest. But the fact is that this this working group is a very Europe Eurocentric operation. <laughs> so should we start one hour earlier? It doesn't make yes. any damn difference. It's after midnight. Where are you? Pacific time. Pacific. Yeah, it's late there. It's or late. early. Tell you what, I'll um we'll do the same thing. We'll we'll set up a doodle. That's very useful for catching people with, with vacations and obscure holidays in various countries we don't know about. Sounds good. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, folks, have we ground to a halt? I think so. Going once, going twice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Great meeting. Bye-bye. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks very much.